We're going to go on a we're going to go on a travel trip deep, deep down under the earth. And what I have here is a little bit of taffy. So the ocean floor is being pushed under North America. Right below where we are is where this is all happening. And it's hot down there. So this old ocean floor is being stretched like this. And that is where these earthquakes are happening, some 40 miles underground. But up top, things are much more locked together. I can zoom it in a little or leave it as is too. Each of these dots is a That's tiny earthquake. Each August. quake some 40 miles underground. A little over 20 years ago, we didn't even know they existed. Remember, these are micro events too. We put a lot of red dots on the map and it looks scary, but nobody feels any of this tremor. Um, and it's not a hazard in and of itself in any way. Harold Tobin is the state seismologist and an expert in subduction. And this is what that is. Remember how near the surface, the crustal plate making up the ocean floor is locked to the North American plate. It's when that lock breaks that we get the big quakes, which also generate big tsunamis. Example, that's what happened in northeastern Japan in 2011 and is expected to happen here. Yeah, the geology and the plate tectonics are like a mirror image of each other between Japan's subduction zones and here in Cascadia. But these deeper zones, which run down into northern California, are not locked, where the lower end of the plate being reheated by the Earth's hot mantle is being pulled down into the Earth. We're seeing patches that are going off at different times in the year. We've been following scientists for decades as they've set out seismometers to learn more and more about these deep quakes that are on some sort of a schedule. For us, they come about 14 months apart. In California, it's only 10 months apart. Coastwide, 2019's been busy, but this time our zone is, well, he says, wimpier. Every 13, 14 months for 20 years, we've been seeing very kind of regular, almost like clockwork events. This one is definitely looking a little bit different than those. Um, that's interesting. We don't know if that's, you know, because it's a major change or if the next one will cycle right back to the sort of normal pattern. But here's the thing. We've only been watching this phenomenon for about 20 years. They were discovered shortly before that in Japan. One theory is that the change of a, a chance of a large earthquake at the surface may happen during one of these slow slip events because of that plate being pulled down. Toma doesn't quite believe that that increases the chances of a big earthquake, but there's a lot we still need to learn. He also runs the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, which tracks all of this stuff um, over at the University of Washington. But he's been all over the Pacific Rim looking at this, particularly in Japan. Speaking of Japan, weren't there silent earthquakes that preceded the earthquake in Japan yes, in 2011? Yes, and this is really an important thing because they, the Japanese have a network of seismometers offshore in the ocean, not far off land and they actually detected a slow some slow slip events like this out there we don't have that lens we have no seismometers out there so he says that's really just sort of a a hole for us with no information in it and they want to be able to do that there's two of these networks now off the coast of Japan monitoring for that kind of activity so but he also says there's a mirror image between both sides, but all of these subduction zones where the Japan, here, Chile, Indonesia, are all a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So the question is how much can you take those analogies mm -hmm. before you start to run into the variations between right. those?